Nairobi's most anticipated annual fashion event, Tribal Chic, is finally back after a pandemic-induced hiatus. On December the 4th, fashion enthusiasts converged at the luxurious Tribe Hotel to celebrate the 11th edition of this glamorous fashion show. In the midst of all this glamour, a young Kenyan fashion designer stood out. He says he is proudly from Kibera. Kibera is East Africa's largest informal settlement with a population of over half a million people. The community has long been confined to a narrative of poverty and hardship, but these streets are also home to some of the continent's greatest talents. And one of these is Ocheng, an internationally renowned fashion designer, also known by his brand, Looks Like a Vido. Take a look. My name is David, uh, David Ocheng and I'm a fashion designer born and bred in Kibra. Um, the reason why my workshop is in Kibera is because I want to show people like the beauty and you know the inner self of Kibera through the colors and through the clothes that we make. When I was invited for the tribal chick, I was so happy for that because uh, for me, it was not just about showing clothes, but for me it was about showing like the vibe that we have in Kibera. Like I believe like that day, Whenever whoever like watched me or show me like you know showcasing over there like they kind of felt how like we normally feel in Kibera because here in Kibera so many people wear different colors, so many people wear kitenges and you know suits, pants and everything. Well, uh, fashion was never my thing, but um, I decided to pick fashion uh, when I when I was dancing because my dance mates are the one that pushed me into fashion, and during that time that when like Sakata was now hot cake other competitions around. So for Sakata, you always were supposed to have like, you know, dancing costumes and you needed to present yourself. So that's when I was like, I started like making a little bit of sketches because I was, used, I, was, I was good in like drawing. So I started like making sketches of ideas of how we could like cater ourselves when we go to perform. But at that same time, we could take the sketches to the tailors to make them, but the tailors could make, yes, good work, but not for performances. So I was like, I just want to do this thing myself. And that's when my dance team like pushed me into doing it. Then I started learning from those tailors. I remember uh, before I started dancing, I dropped out of school in Form 1. So after dropping out of school in Form 1, I worked in construction site for like six months. Then after six months, I stopped working there because I started having chest problems. The reason why I was working at the construction site is because I wanted to support my mom. We were like, you know, raised with a single mom and she was doing a lot trying, you know, to pay for my school fees, pay for my siblings' school fees. And she was only getting paid like, you know, 200, 300 shillings a week, depending if she's lucky to get somebody to wash clothes for and things like that. And in that same period, that is when like I met um, Maisha Foundation, which was certain, like a certain NGO at the time. And they were like taking um, uh, like, you know, youths to do curriculum styles in school. So I approached them and then uh, after approaching them, I wanted them to take me to a tailoring school. But at that time, uh, they could not take me yet because I did not have no certificate from school. It took me three years to save 10,000. After saving 10,000, then I went to my mom. Then I asked my mom, like, mom, I have 10,000. I would like to go back to school. Will you help me with some money if you do have? Then she was like, wait, I have a women group, Chama. Let me go and borrow some money from them. So in these chamas, you are only given the amount of money that it's worth your house, like the things you have in your house. So in case you're not able to pay back, they can take the stuffs and sell them. When my mom went, she was only given 2,000. So I paid for the KCSE. Then I did tuition for two weeks. Then I did my KCSE exam. So after that, I went back to Maisha Foundation and then they agreed to pay for my um, school fees in, in, in the college. So I did certificate in fashion and then I finished the, the, the course. I graduated as the best fashion student in the school. So at that time, I was already like, you know, uh, sharing my work in social media. So I was like, if I start making clothes, I just want to make good clothes and show people that also good clothes can come from Kibera. The first ever person that I ever dressed was um, Japheth, Japheth Okop. Then after dressing Japheth, then I dressed like my late MP, uh, Kenneth. And then after that, the next person was Don Carlos. I'd like you to work with people like Chronix, Chris Martin, Cecile. Uh, I've been able to work with Bruno Mars, Dollar Sign. I've been able to work with Buju Banton, Roman Vago, so many big artists. Beyonce, I was part of the Black Parade for Beyonce's uh, latest album. 
I was um, I was featured in Vogue magazine, Vogue US, Vogue Italia, Essence magazine. I was invited for the Berlin Fashion Week. People used to tell me like this is women job, I'm, I'm doing women job and stuff. So it was hard, and you know them telling me those kind of things are what like encouraged me, mm -hmm. because it gave me the motivation and you know made me accept myself because. I was already born in poverty, so what was there to lose? We are also like training young mothers and also deaf women how to make clothes because we want them to learn how to gain the skill and how they can work towards it, but not to depend on handouts. Right now I've been able like to make uh, more than at least 77 school uniforms and I've distributed them to different uh, students it's because when I was at their age, I wanted somebody to give me a school uniform, but I could not. Like, my buttocks were everywhere. Like, I could not even go to the blackboard to write anything because other students could laugh at me, and whenever they could laugh at me, the more they do it, the more my self esteem was going down. So, I believe, like, by making good school uniform to these kids, it enables them to love school, it enables them, like, you know, to study harder. Fashion has shown me, like, you know, the real life, despite, like, you know, going, growing through much difficulties and everything. Fashion has been my therapy, and fashion have like you know uh, have enabled me to see how life is beautiful and how I can be able like you know to relate to people around me. I don't know what I'll be doing without fashion. Mm -hmm.